Hey everybody, welcome back to The Build Show. Steve Basic here. We're back out here at our kitchen great room remodeling project that we're doing with Modern Renovations. Uh, a little plug to them, you can check them out on uh, Instagram at, at Modern Renovations. But Victor and his guys are doing a superb job. And uh, one of the real interesting things about this project is, if this was two weeks ago, you wouldn't have been able to see me. And why is that? In a lot of remodeling projects here in New England, we end up doing things like taking out fireplaces, removing things, and one of the other big things we do is relocate stairways. So you can see here, this has all been framed in, but this used to be the old stair. So there were walls here that went up to the flat ceiling that separated the living room from the kitchen. And this was a huge barrier, basically leaving you these kind of two tunnel-oriented rooms with really the only access to get in here was a small little passageway on this side. The stairs went down here to the basement. They were narrow, your typical New England. You know, my shoulders would rub on both sides of the walls as I went down. They were steep, not very comfortable, unsafe, you name it. You, you could throw all those metrics at it for reasons to remodel. but. In, in remodeling here, we knew we wanted to get rid of the wall, so we had to find a new home for the stairs. <clears throat> and that allowed us to take out this wall and basically have this great room and kitchen now communicate with each other. And as an enhanced feature, we're doing a, basically a glass wall back here with three new sliders out to the back, new deck, new patio, etc., which will also enhance the fact that you know, we're, we're redoing this kitchen and redoing this great room. So we get rid of the stairs here. We're going to have a nice big island. Um, you can check out my other video where we talked about the volume ceiling in the kitchen here. And uh, But this one here, this one's about the stairs. So we took these stairs, the walls out. We took the stairs out from the basement. We reframed this floor, cleaned it up, sistered the joists. You can see we got the uh, Huber Vantech down there. We're filling it in. We have some places here where we get our flooring guy here. He's going to tooth it all in, match it all up. It's going to work perfect. And then, because we had this nice long living room, one of the uh, places or options that we looked at putting the new stair was at the end of the room here. So you can see that was obviously the, the choice because we now have those stairs in. So we have that new opening cut in. We're gonna have a series of columns here, a nice guardrail so that when you're in this room, you still get the perception of the, the space going all the way back to that wall, not stopping here, but we obviously have the safety of that guardrail. So let's take a walk downstairs. We're gonna jump down there. We're gonna take a quick look at some of the aspects of stair framing and uh, what, what parts and, and code issues that you deal with when you're putting in new stairs. Then we're going to jump back to the studio. I'll pull up that section and we'll uh, blow through some thoughts on the stairs with our good friend Big Red. So let's head downstairs. Hey everybody. So we're downstairs. We have that great room kitchen renovation going up on upstairs there. But like any project, when we're renovating, taking out walls, putting in big beams, it means we're probably doing something in the basement. Now, we knew we were talking about relocating the stairs. And you can see here, if you flip around, but here's the old framing for the old stairway here. Basically, we just filled that all in, stiffen that up. And here's those new stairs that we cut in. Now, we're going to go back to the studio and talk about all the different metrics and code issues with stairs and pull those up. But... One of the things I wanted to point out was in, in working out the design with the homeowner, because I stressed the, uh, the need basically to keep that stair open, the uh, clients were concerned if the kids are down here in the new playroom making noise and they're trying to keep it quiet upstairs, how, how can we separate those spaces? So rather than just come down and have this as an open stair, we actually came down to a landing. We have a little ante space here where we'll have a nice French door that will probably remain open most of the time, but you'll have the ability to close that off and acoustically separate the basement from the upstairs. But uh, as you can see, you know, me coming down the stairs, modern renovations did a beautiful job. 
Um, I'm, you know, my slim 150 pound frame puts things to the test. That's to see if you're paying attention. Uh, obviously the stairs didn't move, so we're doing it right. A couple other things. If you wanted to come over here and uh, just take a really quick peek. Uh, you know, I worked with the building inspector here long enough to know that he doesn't trust anything. And even though we had some lolly columns in here, we had called for some new ones that are literally inches away from here. But because we have no knowledge of what's happening below this slab, we have to assume that it isn't correct. And lo and behold, it isn't correct. This slab is probably about two inches thick. There was literally no footing under here. So basically we have our two by two hole, 12 inches deep. We're gonna have our reinforcing frame in there. We'll pour that new concrete footing and then we'll install our new lolly columns here, which are gonna go up in turn and help hold up that triple 18 inch LVL that in turn holds up the roof and all of that good stuff. So, but uh, one of those things just to point out because it'd be very easy to just sit there and assume that, yeah, we got some structural load that we can impose on here. It shouldn't be a problem. These things are in there, but that more, more times than not, this is the case. You know, 50 years ago, code enforcement, et cetera, it wasn't the same that it was now. And actually this is probably more like 70 years ago. So the, the code enforcement just wasn't what we have now. So always check on those things. But anyways, let's go back to the studio and uh, have a chat about stairs. I'll see you over there. Hey everybody, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, quick tour um, out at the job site, the guys at Modern Renovations, Victor and his uh, fine gents there, they're doing a wonderful job, um, as you can see. And, uh, you know, this, this week's video is about relocating that staircase and improving that relationship between the kitchen and the um, living room, as well as uh, getting a better staircase out of it. So I have some details here and some drawings that I cut out of the drawing set. We can review them. We got our bestest studio friend, Big Red here, and uh, Big Red's going to help with some of that explanation. So let's dive into those drawings and see what we got. All right, everybody. So I'm printing out uh, a couple images here from the drawing set. This first one here is what I call a coordination plan. You can see the uh, existing plan is the series of black lines, and then the red lines are the new work superimposed so that we get an understanding of both situations and how they coordinate. So, you know, out on the job site, we talked about how we relocated this stair. You can see this stairway and associative wall here really become this divider between the great room, living room, and the kitchen space. You know, the kitchen ends up becoming this pretty shallow galley, and, um, and you have this provision for this Pretty long living space there. So it was uh, somewhat of a no-brainer to say, let's take this out, let's clear that up so that now the kitchen and living room are pretty much open to each other and the kitchen now gets those views out to the backyard. And let's take that stairway and just simply relocate it over here and have that so it goes down. And then how do we do that? Obviously, we could have just done that as a solid wall, put a door here, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to keep this that nice open feel. So we actually introduced a couple columns there, and then we'll have a contemporary cable system here that uh, divides those two spaces and leaves this open. And actually, it, you saw in the basement, it turns the corner down there, and there's a door downstairs. So if we want to acoustically separate the downstairs playroom with the upstairs living room, you can close that door down in the basement. But let's take a quick peek at this in section. So you can see here, there's that new stairway laid out. Let's see. So the stair goes down. The last tread is actually a landing because that landing comes out and returns and you step down into the room there um, or step into the room, step down into a little ante 
hallway that takes you into the room. But stairs are, uh, you know, can be kind of tricky. This one here actually laid out pretty nice, but there's a whole bunch of things to, uh, you know, coordinate and parameters when it comes to laying out a set of stairs. So in this one here, you can see we have this um, existing beam that runs down through the basement. So we knew we wanted to miss that. So we basically put the stairs in front of that. Um, in Massachusetts, we have a minimum nine inch tread and eight inch riser, which, you know, it, it works, but I like to strive for more of a, a, uh, 10 inch tread, um, or push it a little further and then get that, uh, riser closer to seven, seven and a half inches. And you can see here, it's actually seven and five sixteenths, basically seven and a quarter inches. So that'll give a nice comfortable stair as we go down. Um, so that, that rise and run. And like I said, it, it sits down on that platform. The, uh, the minimum clearance on a, a finished clearance on a stair here in Massachusetts is three feet. We have actually three foot three, so we're good to go there. And the uh, stairway going up, I believe, is three foot four inches wide. This one, we really didn't have much of a headroom problem because it's open to above, but there is a uh, code restraint that a minimum of six foot eight clear headroom measured from the leading edge of the nosing to a plane that is parallel with the plane of the nosings. So you take that, you move that up six foot eight and you get that headroom space. But as I said, this is pretty much wide open. So we don't have anything above there. Um, and then for aesthetic purposes, you can see we introduced a couple columns there and this will have a wood rail on the top here. And then we'll have a series of wire cable rails here to give more of a contemporary feel in there. We have the larger column here. A um, couple things of note there. Notice that we actually had to introduce some new lolly columns here and introduce some new footings. Um, I showed that existing slab as four inches, but uh, lo and behold, when uh, Victor from Modern Renovations, when they actually cut a hole to do some investigation, they realized that that slab was anywhere from two to three inches. So it was actually pretty shallow. And uh, the existing lolly columns pretty much had no no footing below them. So, you know, hence, whenever I do these projects for modeling, I always call for new footings because we just have no idea what is happening under there. And remember, in this line from the other video, we have these three 18 inch LVLs that go up to a bearing wall that then hold the ridge in, in place. So we have this large load that's moving vertically through the building here. So anyways, I mean, that's the stair. We relocated it. I think it's going to be a great location there. This will be a nice add to that room without really taking anything away from it. But, uh, you know, someone in the kitchen now, now they can see out those back windows people at the island here, you know, they can appreciate the relationship between these two spaces. And uh, if you haven't seen, you know, my other video there where we talk about this kitchen ceiling, go check it out. Uh, that's got a lot of interesting stuff. It's uh, not, not a really huge project, but there's, it packs a punch. So anyways, those are the details of relocating the stair. All right, everybody. So, that about wraps it up. Time to put Big Red to bed. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, video. We relocated those stairs. Um, like like I said in, you know, one of my earlier videos there talking about the kitchen, there's a, there's a different satisfaction when we're doing remodeling jobs. You know, going in there and doing things like relocating a stair, getting rid of it over here, putting it over there, changing the relationship to the kitchen and the family room, really updating that space. Um, it makes a world of difference and it's uh, extremely satisfying to, uh, you know, know that I, at one day I walked in there to meet the clients, looked at the uh, conditions of the existing design and uh, went on a journey with them, you know, had an outcome of a, a new design and now we're working with modern renovations and we're putting it into effect. 
and uh, it's it's going to be a pretty spectacular space when we're all done. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I got a whole bunch of them out there. If you haven't watched some of the previous ones, um, get back there, catch up. Um, a lot of good stuff. I'm dropping knowledge all the time that I can, trying to share as much as I can with you guys and, uh, and gals. And uh, it's not only me. Check out Matt. Check out Wade. Check out Jake. Check out Brent. These guys are all doing great stuff. They're dropping tons of knowledge on the Build Show Network. It's getting, uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on it. So a lot of people watching stuff, a lot of people enjoying it, learning stuff. So uh, yeah, check it all out. Um, for me personally, if you want to find out more, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Stephen Basic Architect. Uh, dropping knowledge almost daily, dropping details, pictures, job site visits, all that good stuff. Trying to keep you up to date with uh, giving you a little snippets of my day. So check that out. And then lastly, I got my good friends Jake and Pete Yost and uh, Jake Bruton, where you uh, host the Unbuild It podcast. You can find us every couple weeks where we're dropping some knowledge. You can find the Unbuild It podcast on um, Spotify, iTunes, all, all those common channels. And uh, we basically uh, break down some building science concepts, break them down to some uh, very uh, easily understood um, common denominators. And uh, we go from there. So that's all I got. That's this week on The Build Show. Until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>